We actually had some fraud on our credit card recently and had to get a new credit card number and had forgotten that the internet bill was going through my husband's old email that's so bogged down with junk that he totally missed the email that said, you haven't paid your bill because your credit card is the wrong number. So they shut off our internet the other day. And so my husband couldn't work and our kids couldn't go to school because he missed that email. So we've updated it to an email address that he actually uses now. Have you heard of a clutter-free January? It was this great playlist where Dawn from The Minimal Mom brought together a bunch of different YouTubers in a collaboration and they all put out videos on similar decluttering topics each week. And I am absolutely loving watching it. I'm learning so much. I will link it below in case you want to binge watch it like I have been, but don't go watch just yet. Stay here with me because I'm going to summarize everything I learned from watching every single video on paper clutter because paper clutter is one of the hardest things to get a handle on and it's definitely something that I have never managed to actually have a good system for and stay on top of. I always feel like I'm drowning in my piles of paper. Before we dive in, if you're new here, thank you for joining me. I can hear my dog's toenails above us. There are no quiet spaces in my house, you guys. Our public school system opened. We could have sent our kids back to school this week. We decided not to for a lot of different reasons. Not right now, so we are still doing my husband working from home in one room, the kids doing distance learning in another room, and me trying to keep everything together. If you're new here, thank you for joining me. It really helps me out if you give me a thumbs up and a subscribe below. And if you ring the bell, it will notify you when I post new content. So now let's dive into paper clutter. I learned so much and I'm already implementing some of the things that I learned. So let's go over some of the main points and some of the things that all of the creators seem to agree on. First of all, it's time to tame the beast. It turns out that paperwork is one of the most daunting things to declutter and to manage in our adult lives. And people are straight up scared of their paper clutter because it feels like Every single piece of paper you've saved requires action from you. And that's not actually the case, it's just what it feels like. And it's why it makes it seem so overwhelming and so very, very stressful. One woman in the collab even talked about being afraid to go check her mail because it felt like this very intimidating task of being an adult that you have to deal with all of these official things and bills and insurance and she couldn't even handle the stress of checking her mail. And if we can get a system for dealing with things and stick to the system because we find a system that works for us and our style, life can get so much better and your stress level can go down so much. The goal with paper clutter is to decrease what you have, stem the flow of things coming into your house, and actually come up with a system that works for you for dealing with your paper clutter. But actually, let's reverse that. So you need to come up with a system that works for you so that you know where paper clutter goes and how you're going to deal with it. You need a plan and you need a place. Start by quickly creating a system for where paper will go when it comes into your house. I know the temptation is to make it really pretty and Pinteresty, and you can do that, but I would recommend, and this is my own input, not something I saw on the other videos, but really probably your best bet at this point is to just slap something together that you think will work. If you can't resist the urge to make it pretty, make it pretty, but be quick about it because otherwise you're going to have a beautiful filing system, a beautiful organizational system that's empty and you're not using it. I created this. It's not pretty. I might make it pretty at some point. You can order the exact right organizer later, but you kind of want to work with a system and make sure that it works for you and you have the right number of compartments and dividers so that you know what you need when you go shopping. You don't want to buy organizing stuff before you've actually organized. And it actually velcros. It's not pretty, I know, but it velcros to the wall across from my recycling bin. So I come in with a stack of mail and I can put things directly into recycling or directly into my file folder. You can always add categories later, but it's better to start with bigger categories where you can really just throw things in so that you get used to starting to use it. And this will work for everybody. And then people who really like more precise categories can add those as they see fit. But what you want to do is get into the habit that as things come in, you deal with them immediately. So then you're not adding to your old piles and making more piles and getting farther and farther behind. 
You also want to stem the flow of what's coming in. This is a minimalism principle that, I don't know why it is always so hard for me to say minimalism. <laughs> Vocal warm ups. You also want to stem the flow of what's coming in. So this is the gatekeeper philosophy that I've talked about in other minimalism videos. You want to limit what comes in because it's just less work for you all around. Unsubscribe from things. Take the time to reduce your junk mail. You know, you can actually write on junk mail on the envelope, refused, return to sender, remove from mailing list, and just put it back in your mailbox and they will take it back and they have to take you off their mailing list. I also heard a great tip from the minimalists and they had a guest on and she said that she had trouble stopping things like the restoration hardware catalog from coming, which is like a phone book. The thing is huge. And she called and they said, no, like we just automatically send it. You can't really get off our list. So she posted on social media and basically used public shaming by saying, I don't want this. I'm never going to buy something because it came in this catalog. What a waste, what a waste of money, what a waste of marketing dollars and what a toll on the environment that this company is doing. And they took her off their list. So public shaming for the win. It takes a lot of extra time to do this over and over and over. There are also services and apps that will help you with this. I think the minimalists talked about using an app that actually helps with junk mail. I'll look that up if I get a chance. But make sure that you're reducing what is coming into your life because you're probably getting a bunch of stuff, catalogs, junk mail, that you just don't even need. You also can, of course, pay your bills online. If that is something you are comfortable with doing, switch everything over so you just get an email once a month or you can set a reminder in your phone to log on and pay your bills. Just make sure that it's not going to your junk mail, it's not getting buried with a bunch of other stuff. What I do sometimes is I just don't open it when I see that it's a bill so that it's still highlighted in bold and then I know that that's something I actually need to deal with soon. And when I log back on, if I haven't paid it, it'll be in bold and everything else will not be. I pay our mortgage online, but for that, I have a reminder set in my phone and I have an email alert if the day comes and goes that it's due and I haven't paid yet, I'll get an alert. Lastly, you want to attack your old piles. This might seem counterintuitive to do it in this order, but if you try and attack the old piles first and there's still too much coming in and you don't have a place to put it or a system for dealing with it, it can be really hard to get on top of the entire thing. So your third step will be dealing with the piles that are already there that probably are like 50% trash anyway, let's be honest, but you don't feel that way. I know you don't feel that way and you don't trust me, but I'm going to show you one of my piles and we'll see how much of it can actually just get recycled or tossed. Once you have a system in place that's working for you, that's easy for all of the new paperwork that's coming into your house, then you can use Dana's slogan from A Slob Comes Clean, where she says five minutes matters. She might say five minutes counts but I like five minutes matters because I like alliteration and maybe that's what she said. So she says five minutes matters. Set a timer for five minutes and for you or for your family, whoever's helping you, commit to doing just five minutes of attacking a pile of paper. This gives you an unintimidating goal that you can definitely do and it's pretty easy to find five minutes to declutter. It's not so easy to find it's not as intimidating as trying to find the time that it is going to take to get all of your house under control. So take it in little chunks, find five minutes here and there, set a timer. If it's going well, you can work well past the timer. You might just get on a roll and keep going, which is fine, but you can stop after five minutes. Another great thing that Dana says is that you want to always make progress. So don't just take your pile of paper and sort it into five different piles of paper. That's not progress, that's just stuff shuffling, I think she says, right? You're just moving stuff from one place to another place and you're not actually moving forward. So take the time to deal with things. If I have these labels that I made that I was gonna put on my storage boxes and I have these in a pile of paper, I need to just go into my storage room, put them on the boxes and be finished with them so that you're actually making progress and you can stop, you can be interrupted at any point and you will always have made progress forward. A lot of what I learned from the whole A Clutter Free January playlist was that there is not one right way to organize. The right way to organize is the way that works for you. It is something that is easy for you to do, fits your style and that you can maintain going forward. I think that I was stuck in this trap thinking that 
Organized people always have little micro categories of things, but as I talked about, sometimes it's better to just have big bins or big files, big categories that you can just throw things into if that's more your style. Because if you're not ever actually gonna stop and put the little things in the little places, then that does you absolutely no good. My problem is that I thought that everything had to be very micro organized and I was very stuck in this like type A, this is the right way of doing it. And that's just not the season of life that I'm in so I couldn't maintain it, so then things just got completely out of control. It didn't even occur to me, I'm such a dunce, but it didn't even occur to me that there is more than one way to do this and that an organized person can look very different depending on their style. Look around your house and see if there's a place where there's a system that is working and that might give you some clues as to what your style is, whether it's more macro, more micro, more visual, or more hidden. I think a lot of my impulse to micro organize was coming from anxiety. I had anxiety about losing things, misplacing things, not being able to find things when I needed it. A lot in my life has gotten completely out of control in the past eight years since having children. And so part of what has been so overwhelming for me about motherhood is that I don't feel like I can get on top of things the way I used to be able to. And so I'm realizing that in this season in my life, I don't need things micro-organized. I can add that back in later if I want to when I'm in a different season of life. But I don't actually really see that happening because I don't feel think that's truly my style. I think it was just this anxiety, this hanging on to this idea that things needed to be a certain way and that that was the right way and the only way to do it correctly. As I let go of my anxiety, which I mean, kids will teach you to let go of a lot, right? You had your expectations for what life would be like with kids and how you would be as a parent. And as you had kids, the more kids you have and the more time that passes, your expectations just need to get lower and lower and lower until you're feeding them trail mix for lunch and giving yourself a thumbs up because it's got fruit and nuts in it, so it's healthy. If you have a great system for dealing with paper clutter that you don't actually use, then is it really a great system for you? If you do have a great system that is working for you, tell me below in the comments. But something you say might help me out and it might help someone else out. And that is what we are here for, guys. All right, you've made it to the end. Thank you so much. The biggest compliment you can give me is to share my video with other people who you think that it might help. And stay tuned for more videos coming up. Until next time, you've got this, mamas.